Action CNN projects the Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock will win re-election in the Georgia Senate runoff, defeating Republican challenger Herschel Walker. Warnock, who joined the Senate after a special election victory two years ago, is now poised to serve his first full six-year term. Again, CNN is projecting Senator Raphael Warnock will be re-elected in the state of Georgia, a critical win for Democrats. This is what it means for the balance of power in the Senate. Democrats now have an outright majority of 51 Senate seats. This strengthens their control of the chamber. Republicans have 49 Senate seats. That's one less, one fewer than they have now. Let's check in with our correspondents covering the candidates. Eva McKend is with uh, Senator Raphael Warnock. And Eva McKend, I see behind you people celebrating that CNN has projected Raphael Warnock will be reelected to his first full six year term, Eva. Yes, uh, Jake, uh, obviously it's exuberant in here tonight, and this is what uh, Democrats have been telling me all evening, that this really solidifies Georgia as a true battleground state. You know, uh, Democrats fought a, a, a hard in the final hour to get that Saturday voting. Um, they are indicating to me that they think that that was really crucial as well in ushering in this victory tonight. Uh, but this still shows that Democrats are still in play in this state. You know, they won no other statewide races during the general election. The governor's race on down, uh, but tonight they have a victory. Jake? A big victory, a huge big victory for Democrats. And Dana Bash, uh, in the midterm elections, not only did Democrats not lose any Senate seats, they actually picked one up. It is really remarkable when you see the map, and you know this, Senator, because you were quite literally all over the map campaigning for uh, and with your your colleagues and those who wanted to be in the Senate, like uh, John Fetterman in Pennsylvania. Uh, given every headwind that Democrats have had, you're now one up from where you were before. Yeah, well, could I just celebrate for one moment? Pretty cool. I came on the set, we were 800 votes behind, and suddenly, here we are. And this is what we thought was going to happen. And again, democracy on the ballot, the fact that Raphael Warnock and so many of our candidates were high quality, had the back the people of this country, and then finally, no one wants their freedoms taken away. And the Dobbs decision and what we saw out of that with moderate Republicans and independents joining Democrats to say, wait a minute, um, reproductive freedom means something to me. All of those issues were on the ballot in Georgia, and Raphael Warnock never wavered, and I am so happy for him today and for the Senate that we're going to have him back. He's a force. So you, you had raised a lot of concerns about Georgia, the election laws that had been put in place there. You and other Democrats had as well, suggesting this is possible Jim Crow type legislation that was enacted in the state. We're seeing about 3.3 million voters, according to election officials, showed up today. Was there any evidence that those fears were borne out that you and other Democrats raised over the last year? We don't know what the totals would have been if it would have been easier for people to vote. And what we are seeing across the country, remember they were trying to ban Saturday voting right before the election, who does that? Usually when parties lose an election, like what happened with Trump and a number of their candidates in the midterms, they step back and say, what should we do about changing our policies or their candidates? What they've been saying is, let's change yeah. the voters. Let's make it harder for people to vote. And me Georgians respond to that. They don't like that. Yeah, and, and meantime, we should just actually sort of mark the moment. It's pretty, pretty cool shot right there, the, the picture that we're seeing from Warnock headquarters, because this this is uh, a, a re, not, not a, it's a re-election, but it's actually his first full term. He's run... <laughs> the last this two years, fourth, twice. This is the fifth time he's yes. been oh, this is the fifth uh, time. on the right. ballot in two years. Uh, uh, two points about this. Obviously, Democrats really, as Senator Klobuchar knows, worked their butts off in the state of Georgia, going back even before 2020. This has been a many years long effort to create a ground game where one really did not exist uh, at the statewide level in the state. But it is also a catastrophic failure for Republicans to lose two Senate seats in a, in a red state uh, where, where they could have had a fighting chance because of some really key missteps and failures, frankly, to uh, acknowledge what was happening and respond to it. When Trump basically depressed his own vote 
Uh, that really sealed the deal back in 2020 and set up a chain of events that has led, up, led us to this moment. For the next four years at least, Georgia is going to have two Democratic senators, and that's going to give Democrats uh, for a little while longer a real opportunity to to lock in some of these gains that they've been working on for all of these years. And it's going to be that much harder the next time around for Republicans to try to claw this back. I think that this was a key moment for them, and they missed their shot. Well, it, they missed their shot. And Anderson, uh, I'm sure you're going to talk about this with your panel. Uh, it was Donald Trump and his influence in a very negative way in Georgia that set off that chain of events that really hurt them there. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. I mean, Van Jones, uh, it is extraordinary to to see this turn of events. Um, oh, it feels good. <laughs> it feels good. Um, you know, Georgia. This is Georgia. This is Georgia. Uh, that the, the the blood of martyrs uh, is still uh, in the soil in that state. Uh, people that were lynched, people were beaten, people were enslaved in that state. Uh, the idea that not once, not twice, five times you had someone. Uh, like uh, uh, Warnock, be able to be a senator six years. I mean, he's going to be there for six years. It's a very, very big deal. And you got to thank the grassroots. You got to thank Color of Change. You got to thank Black Voters Matter. You got to thank the Working Families Party. You got grassroots groups out there and fought hard. And by the way, you got to thank Stacey Abrams because it was Stacey Abrams that, that made that entire thing even possible. This was beyond our ability to imagine before Stacey Abrams. Sometimes your candidacy loses, but your cause wins. So congratulations to Obama for being there. And also, thank you, Donald Trump, for <laughs> giving us this opportunity wow, to make I, even more history. I mean, I, I think Georgia, after this midterm, after what happened in 2020, may be remembered as the state that finally broke Donald Trump. And losing Georgia in the presidential election, losing the Senate race, um, this is not a state Republicans ought to be losing. And so... When we go through this Republican primary, we need to think about the state of Georgia. It's going to be a swing state in 2024. Uh, and if we go down this road again, I suspect we're gonna get the same result. I think Brian Kemp uh, does stand out for me, uh, despite uh, the Democrats and congratulations to Senator Warnock. I do think Kemp had a, had a good cycle here and did what he needed to do to show the Republicans that he wants to be a team player. And also the Georgia elections officials and the people who wrote the Georgia voting laws. This was called Jim Crow 2.0 by Joe Biden and others. And everybody voted, good turnout, good election, nothing bad happened, Governor Duncan, to all the Republicans down there who took all the grief for that. I think it, it, it should be said, this worked swimmingly in Georgia, even though Republicans didn't get a good outcome, the election system. Well, Jeff, Jeff Duncan, let me ask you, I mean, you think this could be good for the Republican Party I mean, or, or necessary? This is a necessary step. Yeah, let, let me qualify my answer by saying, if you're a Republican, you're disappointed, and the only way to explain this is candidate quality, right? There, that's the only way to explain it, what a nine-plus point delta between Brian Kemp's margin and where it looks like Herschel Walker's going to finish this up at. So candidate quality does matter. Look, we've got a lot of work to do. I think Americans wake up all over this country worried about two things. The direction of Republicans wake up worried about two things. Who's going to take the lead in the party? And what's the economy going to do? People are going to be scared to death tomorrow to lose their job, and they don't know where, where the Republican Party's headed. We need a leader to show up big time. We need a once-in-a-generation leader to show up that actually understands conservatism, understands the values and the outcomes of making conservative decisions, and truly challenge Joe Biden in 24. If we don't take our medicine here, it's our fault. You know, I was um, just uh, emailing with a Republican strategist who was a Walker supporter, and here's what he said. Kemp's ground game with McConnell's money nearly saved what Donald Trump ruined. <laughs> And he said that every Republican statewide won. What's the difference here? The difference was Donald Trump. And he said, you know, we have to get over this. We just have to get over this dependence. One other thing I want to note is that uh, Ron Klain, the White House Chief of Staff, uh, tonight uh, uh, tweeted that uh, Biden becomes the first president since FDR in 34 to see every senator of his party who was up for re-election re-elected.